started here. Uh, I just want to ask the question, has anyone ever done a Google ad before? No. No, okay. Nope. Nope, okay. Why not? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm new, so I didn't have a reason to. Okay. That's but I did excuse. just set up, um, I did just order my page or listing. I did do that. Okay. Okay. So for those of you who aren't new, why, why not? Why haven't you done a Google ad? I was assuming it was costly, so I was hesitating. Yeah. Yeah. Could be afraid that it costs too much. Yeah. Cheryl? I looked into it. It was just a little complicated. So, oh. so here I am. <laughs> That's the word, right? Complicated. Um, same thing with Facebook. Like I know that Facebook's gotten significantly easier since we do that inside of command now. Um, but I used to advertise on Facebook before we had these tools like command that made it really easy. My gosh, I had like, I have a degree in advertising and marketing. Like that was my life in Facebook. Like they, they try to trick you. <laughs> like they wanted to be a, a slip up to where like you spend more money, you give them some dollar bills and, uh, you know, you make a mistake and, and your objection or excuse me, your objective or your goal, and you're kind of throwing money away. Um, I don't want to say it's there by design to make it complicated, but they sure as heck don't make it easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my goal today is to kind of show you, all of you how easy it is that we can do these Google ads. There is a little bit of setup and some things that we need to walk through today uh, just to get started. But moving forward, these are going to be a piece of cake. Um, what's really cool about Keller Williams, I know I'm not here to pitch you and present KW to y'all, but it's because of our investment with the technology side of things, especially with command and how we're trying to create this end-to-end -end agent to consumer platform that doesn't exist at any of the brokerage, that it caught the attention of companies like Facebook and Google. And those companies were willing to partner with us. They wanted to partner with KW in order to kind of build these tools so that they can test these things for like their larger enterprises. So we're in a pretty unique situation that we have like really simplified versions of Google and Facebook ads inside of Command. So we're going to walk through that today, but I'm going to share with you just like how easy it is. The goal is that you don't have to stress. Um, and I'll be quite honest with you. I love Facebook ads. Excuse me. I, well, I do love Facebook ads, but I love Google ads. Um, I did uh, recently on my YouTube channel, put a, a video uh, on my, my channel called the three buckets of online leads in which I kind of break down the differences between and, and drew them out here for you. Um, oh, it's not going to be seen. Um, sorry about that, but it's the, the three buckets of Zillow ads, Google ads, and Facebook ads. When we look at the online world, these are basically the three places that you get leads from. Now, there are some other places like realtor.com, but they're like your listing websites like Zillow, your Google, which is your search engines, and then I call it Facebook, but essentially your social media websites. This is like the online equivalent of the physical world where we have for sale by owners, door knocking, and then throwing a billboard on um, 400. The key thing is that you have to understand how you get these leads and what objections they may have. Just like with an expired listing and a for sale by owner, those are people who are waving their hand saying, hey, I'd like to maybe buy or sell a house or I'm looking to sell my house. They both have a sign in the yard and yet they're two completely different objections. They have two completely different types of scripts that you need to use to go after them. So it's really important to understand that when I go after a Google lead for today's topic, how did this person enter my world? And I'm gonna open that up as a question. How do you get a Google lead? They probably were searching for homes in the area or the thought process and then that, um... I guess the anal the algorithm somehow it ranks me wherever I find me nearby. Yeah, you, you nailed it. But the action that the lead or the potential customer is making is they went to Google and they pulled out their keyboard and they started typing homes for sale in blank. Find me an agent in blank, relocation to blank. They're putting in these keywords and they're indicating to us that they have a real estate need. Same way that a for sale by owner kind of puts a little sign in their yard that says, hey, all the agents, please call me. I need help. <laughs> um, they're indicating to us that they have a real estate need. Now, what I, the reason why I love Google so much, and whenever I do my three buckets demonstration, sorry that the virtual background's not working today, 
Um, I put this one in the middle and I often called it Google as my Goldilocks. The porridge isn't too hot, the porridge isn't too cold, the porridge is just right. And the reason for that is if somebody is searching homes for sale in, I'm gonna use Johns Creek for today's example. If someone's searching homes for sale in Johns Creek, they're indicating to me that this person has just begun their research. They are not so far into this process that they're probably working with an agent, nor have they done so much research that they even know where they wanna live. They're still looking at listings. They've just started their process. And the assumptions that we can make about these leads is that they're just now starting, they don't have representation, but they do, but they do have intent. And those are the, the two really cool things or the key things that we're looking for with leads. Because oftentimes Zillow, which is also a, a, a Zillow, Redfin, uh, Realtor.com, your KW.com websites, these are great leads too. But if you're paying to be on Zillow, that's a much more expensive space to get these leads. They're gonna move faster, no doubt about it. They're further in the process, but they're gonna be more expensive. But Google is that sweet spot because you're getting leads with intent and you're getting leads that um, are unrepresented. And also I'll show you how cheap it is to advertise on Google. There's often this assumption that Google is really expensive. The cool thing is you get to determine your budget. Just like with Facebook, if you have $2 to spend, you can have $2 to spend. You may not get as many leads. However, there's opportunity there, you determine your budget. I'm just gonna go ahead and start now. The best results that I've ever received on Google is whenever I spent about $250 a month on Google. Now, that is like the maximum I would ever go. You could easily turn something around on Google for maybe 50 bucks a month. Oftentimes with Facebook, we, we talk about weeks of advertising. If you were to break that down, that's roughly like $12 a week. Now, here's the thing. If I'm turning $12, or $50 or $250, whatever your budget is, and there's no judgment around it. If you take that money and turn that into a $10,000 commission, who here wouldn't take a $12 deal and turn it into, into 10,000? Is there anyone here that wouldn't trade me 250 for 10,000? Yeah. No. Right. So that's the key thing. Your budget, what you put into it, you're gonna get out of it. Always play red light, green light with it. That's a reference to the MREA. Uh, inside the budget model, it's smart that you spend the money that make that you can afford to, to spend there. Assume you're going to lose it. Don't always assume you're going to get it back, but we want to hold that dollar accountable. If you're spending $50 a week and you're not getting the results, then stop it and reevaluate before you go spending more money. Cool. All right. Any questions on the three buckets? I know that was a very brief overview, but if you haven't seen it, I highly, highly encourage you to go take a look at my YouTube channel. Um, it's got to be in my last five recent uh, videos on three buckets of online leads, but any questions around that? Oh. Cool. All right. So before we jump into the nitty gritty of creating a Google ad, I want to share some of the things that you need to have or your must haves. So the number one is you must have a plan. We know that people are going to Google and they are typing in a very specific keyword. They may be typing homes for sale in, and they may name a, a geographic area. They may search homes for sale in and name a school district. They may say things like relocation to or military homes in or um, first time home buyer in the town. The key thing is like, if you try to chase all of those keywords, you're gonna have terrible results. So it's best that you find either your, your niche, find out what it is you wanna specialize in or go after a certain geographic area, but have a plan of attack. Now, this doesn't also have to be just about real estate. One of the greatest opportunities inside of Keller Williams, and uh, tomorrow is the day in which all the profit share checks go out to all of the uh, um, agents that are in the profit share pool. You could recruit on Google as well. You could go find you know, real estate um, schools in Alpharetta, and you could advertise to that too. Like there's, there's free range here, you as a real estate agent at KW. So this is something you can use beyond real estate if you think about it. So step one is you have to have a plan. That's the number one must have. The other thing that's super important with Google ads is that you have to have a strong website that does lead capture. Now, I will tell you, if you were using the KW command websites, the new ones that we've had for the last two years, those are dynamite. 
if you're using the billboard version or the business card version of the older websites that a lot of our agents have had for a number of years with top producer or market leader, where it's more about promoting you, the agent, than it is what the lead does on your website, you may want to consider the new, the new command ones. Take a look at our websites, the new command ones, compare them to Zillow, and you'll see why consumers stay on our websites more than just those agent branding ones. And I'm not beating up anybody. It's a wake-up call of don't be in business the way that we used to do it five years ago. The consumers are changing. What they look for in websites is changing. We have to adapt. Hopefully, I'm, no, I'm not being harsh to anyone, but that's a key thing. Um, I see someone has the hand raised. Alina. Yes. Hi. Um, quick question, I think. Um, yeah. You just mentioned the KW website. Now, is that the regular website that we automatically get when we start, or is there something extra that we need to do? Or yeah, the one you get. Yeah, the one you get with KW, and it's usually like your first name, last name. KW.com, like mine, Sam Jackson. KW. Yeah, that that website. And yep. is, is there that something that we need to do to make it capture leads? No. So, so the the development team and the technology team at KW researched and put a ton of money like those are billion dollar websites they put a billion dollars into into those in the command they are set up to capture leads when it's appropriate mm -hmm. some of you may have maybe you've had this in the past or you've visited another agent or another brokerage that had this to where like if i go to your website and i search for homes for sale in roswell i get to look at three houses before forced registration screen comes up has anyone ever seen that or implemented it yeah what happens yeah. People leave. They're like, well, screw this. I'm going to Zillow. And that's how we lose them. We have forced registration, really voluntary registration on places in our website where it makes sense. So if somebody favorites a property, obviously we're asking them to register because how are we going to save that favorite property? It's the same thing if I were to go to Amazon without being signed in, add something to my cart, it's going to ask me to sign in so it can save it to my cart later. Kind of the same concept. It makes sense as a consumer where we force registration. Um, obviously if somebody hits the ask your agent button, schedule a tour button or the contact button, those are all the places that make sense from a consumer standpoint that we ask for it. So that's why those are so strong. We don't have forced registration just because you clicked on a fourth house instead of three. Cool. Yeah. Is that, is that new command website SEO and compatible and IDX compatible? Yes, they are here. I, I'll, show, I'll just pull mine up really quickly. And I'm gonna jump into an incognito window for today's session. All right, can y'all see my screen here? I'm going to my website. Yes, sir. Yep. Excellent. When did they become SEO and IDX compatible? Uh, when we launched them. Uh, that was two Octobers ago. Oh, okay. 2019, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and if you need help with that, let me know. We can talk about that outside of class that we can maybe um, go into the back end of your websites and play around with them. Yeah. Um, so, so this is my website. Again, mine's mostly used for training. So don't beat me up too bad. There's definitely some things that I, I lack in here. But if you were to compare our website and let's pull up a Zillow side by side. You'll see some pretty common things here. On Zillow, I have some tabs up at the top with some content. Mostly what my eye is drawn to as a consumer, big search bar. I go back to my command website. I have some tabs, I have some content. Mostly big search bar. This is the number one thing, according to NAR and their profile of buyers and sellers, that when a, a, a client comes to your website, they just want a big search bar. And this does have IDX capabilities. If I were to come in here and hit search, I can literally go anywhere in the country and find a listing regardless of the MLS. So if I zoom in on Ann Arbor, Michigan, I can see listings for, for this territory or anywhere in the globe. It's my old hometown. <laughs> oh, excellent. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Now take a look at this. Let me go back one more screen. There's only been one company that has ever made a dent inside of Zillow's traffic and it's been Redfin. I'm going to pull up Redfin here. See anything uh, kind of common? <laughs> yeah. Big search bar. Did they copy us or did we copy them? <laughs> um, at this point, it's hard to say who, who hasn't talked yeah. to Zillow. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, Zillow, Zillow's done it best. 
Um, so yeah, I think I think we're all catching up there. Um, but the key thing is we need yeah, to get the them big difference is when she asked that question is that when if they're searching on your website, the information comes to you. If you search on the Redfin website, it goes to Redfin and disperses it to whomever. So good point. Good best, point. You know, yeah. Same information on your website that you, they can go to Redfin. We have the same information on our websites and it's all coming to you because there's going to come a point in time where they're looking on a house. They may want to see it and they're going to give you the information and you're going to call them. Redfin's not going to call an agent and say, hey, I got 20 leads. Do you want them? Do they sell their leads, Sam? I don't no, now know. that Redfin is a brokerage now, they, oh, they no. keep all that internal. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Harry, quickly, is that with all um, other other companies? And the reason why I'm asking, I don't want to get too far off site because I'm trying to make sure I understand what's going on. But I have been contacted by Boomtown, HomeSnap, <laughs> all of these different companies. And uh, one of the things they're saying, like, uh, that command does not. Okay, I see your hand. I see your they hand. want your money. They want your money. Yeah. Okay, but the, well, I guess that was why I asked, well, how is this any different than what, you know, KW Command offers? And one of the things that I heard yesterday was that it does not lead generate. Whereas there, and I don't know if that's true to that or not. Um, but okay. We're teaching on it today. I'm yeah, I'm going to show you how to lead generate mm -hmm. today. <laughs> right. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. And, and here's the thing. For those of you who have been through like my fundamentals of, of command training, the best training that you're going to get, and this is me taking off my technology hat, is open up the Red Book. Open up MREA. You'll hear me often talk about the models and the systems that we teach it or that we have at Keller Williams that other businesses and other brokerages borrow because we write the models on lead generation. Honest to goodness, I love teaching these classes and I also hate teaching these classes. And the reason for that is because the number one form of lead generation that you're going to have from a tech standpoint is the contacts tab inside of command. It's your database people that already know you. That's going to be where the goal is. This is going after people that you don't know. This is a lead generation from the eyes of the tech companies. Um, but yeah, just if you follow the red book and you work with people who already know you, that's, that's where the leads really come from. But yeah, Facebook, uh, email campaigns, Google ads, we do lead generation side of command. Cool. And I'm getting an internet is unstable. Can y'all still hear me? Yeah, you keep going in and out. Did I cut out? Okay. All right. Just, um, yeah, you were in ice for a little while. Okay. Well, I said something really important and powerful. So hopefully y'all caught all that. It was so motivating. We did not. All right, let we me see not. here. <laughs> you lost us at Red Book. At the Red Book. Okay, can, am I coming in clear now? Clearer? Make a thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, just know I said something really powerful, super motivating. Y'all love command and, and KW and technology, and it was all good. All right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I just want to, oh, Adrian, you know, I get those calls too. Everybody does. I mean, take notes and ask questions and, you can bring it back to our technology team, and I guarantee you that we have the same thing. Only you know we talk about it with different. I mean, I guarantee that anything they tell you, okay, and we bring it back to this hammer or, or the, the, the KDA team. We have it. Yeah, we definitely have it. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Heron. And and what they're what those what they're trying to do is they're trying to create a gap for you, right? They're trying to find some pain point that doesn't exist uh, to sell their technology to you. Cool. All right. So um, you, need a, you need a really powerful website, use the command ones, they're strong. The last thing you need to advertise on Google, this one may seem like a no brainer, it's a Google account. Now, here's the catch. All of you already have a Google account because we use our KW affiliate partnership with, um, with Google. However, Google does not let you advertise with what we call like the enterprise contracts, like your at KW um, Gmail. So if you don't have a personal Gmail, you will have to go create one, okay? That's super, super important, they're free. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that now from scratch. Just know that if you already have your own personal Google account, you can skip this step, but let's just walk through it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go to Google. Oh. Cool. Easy enough, right? I'm going to go to Google. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this sign in button up here in the top right. 
Now I need to create one. I don't have one, but clicking the sign in button allows me to create an account. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create it for, uh, for my business. It doesn't really matter, but let's just do it for my business just so that we're not in trouble with Google. And then basically you're signing up like for a new email address, for a new account. Um, if you already have a personal one, you can skip all this, but I'm just going to put in Sam Jackson. And then you have to create a unique username that um, you can log into later if you need to. Um, let's just see here, shoot, I need a new one. Sam Jackson test at gmail.com. So that would be my login, my username. Use something appropriate for you, that does matter. How on earth is that taken? Test one, there we go. All right, and then create your password. It's the Sam Jackson from uh, Capital One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a pretty famous Sam there's Jackson. A lot of Sam Jackson. His name used a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm signing up. First name, last name. I have a username now. This will be my email address. I'm gonna hit next. It's gonna send me um, a verification to my cell phone just to make sure that I am who I am. Don't try and steal my account, it's super important. My new fake account. But Google will give you this verification process. You can put in recovery email address, optional. It's gonna ask for your date of birth, make sure that you're old enough to advertise. Don't make the, don't wanna make anyone feel bad. I was born 86. Okay. And then it's gonna probably prompt me to do some other things like get more for your number and some other stuff. Once you've gone through just creating your account, you can skip now. Apply for the terms. No one actually ever reads this stuff. I'm gonna hit agree. And then it's gonna say, uh, would you like to set up a business profile? This is a whole separate class. I would highly recommend doing this, uh, but for now, we're just gonna skip this for now. We're gonna hit not now, but that's where to like you show up on the map. And then once you've gone through that, it's gonna bring you all the did way you back say, to the is that, is that where Did you say that's where like, like if I, if I did like Aaron Kreitner Homes and put in the address of the office that it'll be a little pin on the map? Yeah, so like, like, so like I just Googled right. donuts near me, I would show up like here. Okay. Yeah, yep, exactly. So now we're not searching for donuts, although those do sound delicious. Um, we're just going to Google, Google ads. Now what's cool here is uh, it's, this is actually an advertisement, um, but it's ads.google.com is the actual website, but I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me through this process to create a Google advertising account. Now we're going to create this on Google and get it set up. However, what we're going to do is we're not actually going to uh, create an ad. We're just going to create this advertising account and then we're going to back all the way up to uh, command. Now, this is really, really tricky. So if uh, I get too far ahead or if you get behind, let me know. We can stop. But there's some uh, really important yeah. things in here. Let's stop right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello? Can you hear me? Hi. Okay. Real quick. How do we get to this page right here? I missed something. Okay. Ads.google.com. Okay. That's why I missed it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Ads.google.com. It'll take you right here. Okay. Uh, Kaylee, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just take yourself off mute. Go ahead and shout out. Is this? Oh, you're, you're muted. You went oh. back on mute. Is this recorded? This is recorded, yeah. Yep. Go. Cool. Thank you. All right. Is everyone on the screen? Yep. Okay. So ads.google.com, and we're going to click start now. Now, this is tricky. This is looking like this is going to be really easy, that Google was going to make this easy. I'm going to go ahead and let you know, this is Google setting up a trap because they want your money today. So what we're going to do 
is believe it or not, we're gonna go down to the bottom of your screen and you may have to scroll, but we're gonna click on this button that says switch to expert mode. Congratulations, we are experts in Google advertisements today. We're gonna to go ahead and click on that button. Yes. We're gonna click on switch to expert mode. And it's gonna take us to like the main dashboard of Google advertising as if we've been doing this for a hundred years and we know what we're doing here. Yeah. On this screen, is everyone still with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Walida, I saw a headshake for now. Are you good? Okay. All right. So on this screen, again, we have to click this tiny blue text. We're going to click on create an account without creating a campaign. Again, it's a lot of like smoke and mirrors that makes you want to go through creating an ad today. We're not going to do that. Not on Google News, but we're going to create an account without a campaign. And when we click on that, this is all we need to do. We need to go through and change our, our billing information to the right setting. So mine came in automatically for US, came in for New York, and it came in for dollars. If yours is something different, you have to change that just by clicking on the drop down menus, but they should be good. And click submit. No tricks there. And now we're going to click explore your account. Now, Google changes quite often. So let me just make sure that this button hasn't changed. But what we're going to do, the only thing that we need to do inside of Google is basically put our credit card information into Google. Because when we advertise in command, we pay Google directly. We don't get charged from KW, you, you pay Google directly. However, we need to set the billing here. And then we'll basically, we'll just log into command. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on, the last time I believe it was inside of settings. Let me double check. We're going to go to settings. And anyone see billing, 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 billing. It may not be billing. Let me take a look at my name. Not there. Let's find it again. On mine, I see bid, billing as the first setup. As the first setup. Where do you see that? Do you see it on my screen? Um, under mine. Oh, over here on the right. My, yeah. Right. There we go. All right. So billing. I'm blind today, apparently. We have billing. And then we're going to click you, on Can you repeat settings. that again? Sorry. Well, where did, where did you find yep. billing? Click on tools and settings to the right. Okay. Okay. And then over on the right, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. Uh, it's billing on the far right. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it because of that. Okay, I see it. Yeah, Zoom is in the way. And then we're going to go to settings. Okay, cool. Cool. And then from there, we're just going to put our credit card information in. Got it. So, Sam, if you've already, I, I think one of the issues we had last time when we talked about this um, was if you already had the current account set up it's just a matter of getting that payee putting the, the card attaching it to it that way it, funds are automatically paid through so that that was definitely the trickiest part by far the rest of it's not half bad um it's just getting this to this little hitch right here so don't let that deter you you know if you need direct more help i'm sure sam or yep. uh lands or one of the group will definitely help if you need fine tune help with it because it was a serious pain yeah, and it's 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 almost like the same reason why like your favorite grocery store moves the bread, milk, and eggs at other places in the grocery store because they want you to like walk through and buy their stuff. Same thing here. Um, these things move quite often. Um, but yeah, if if you want to jump in our office hours, you need help with this, let me know. But the cool thing is like once we do this for the first time, we don't ever have to do it again. <laughs> um, so the cool thing is now that we have our Gmail account or our Google account set up and uh, you put a credit card information in here and hit submit, you're good to go, okay? Now, I don't have my wallet on me and I don't need to put my credit card for y'all on Zoom. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this step and just know that crossing the finish line just means that you come in here and type in your credit card information, okay? That's the last thing and then hit submit, cool? All right, now, once you've hit submit, you have a Google advertising account. We are all set up there. We are good. So now we're going to leave Google and never come back. 
We're now going to log into command, go to agents.kw.com, and this is where the fun begins. I'm going to log in. And we're going to go to our settings inside of command. So I'm going to click on my name up here in the top right. And then I'm going to go to settings. Am I cutting out again or is there someone commenting? Sorry. Oh, no, we can hear you. We're good. Okay. It's just slow. Say it again, Alex. It's just slow. Slow. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click on my name in the top right and go to settings. And while that loads, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my video. Maybe I'll be faster that way. I also realized that teaching technology classes on Tuesdays is not the best practice necessarily because that's the day that they typically update. <laughs> oh, we'll get through it. We'll focus on the plan, not the problem. All right. Um, but now that I've clicked on settings, this is the screen where you see like the DocuSign, the Facebook, all of the different connections that we have inside of command. As I scroll through here, you should be able to see a spot for Google AdWords. It's the funky looking like upside down V or A with the Google colors. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the, for you, you're gonna click the connect button. It's gonna have you sign into your, your new Google account. Now, for those of you that just newly minted a Google account, it should be easy to remember what telephone number and email address and your password information, you should be good there. But once you're connected and signed into Google, you should have a screen that looks like mine to where it says your name here, and your only two options are either manage account or connect more. But you're gonna sign into Google. Now, this is the one that I already have attached with my own personal email address um, that, that already has a credit card on file. Um, so I'm logged in here, good to go. Any questions on this? Cool, pretty straightforward. All right, cool. So now to advertise on, on Google, we're gonna jump into the campaigns feature of command. So for those of you that aren't familiar, that is the megaphone or bullhorn icon over here. We're gonna to jump to campaigns. It is really slow. All right, anyone have a good joke while we wait? Hey, Sam. Yes. Is this Questions. Is, how, how different is this from um, having your own domain set up? Completely different thing. Totally yeah. different. Completely okay. different thing. Yep. Yep. Okay. I just yeah, we can maybe talk, talk offline what you're thinking about there, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they ask you to connect with this or with that, and it's, it, it's mind boggling how. Uh, they try to get you to buy stuff along the way. Yeah, there, there's a lot there. If you ever, if you ever get pitched by a salesperson to buying anything technology-wise, let me know. Um, we can either find a, a better solution or maybe a cheaper one, or I can tell you if it's a good buy or not. Be more than happy. Um, and, and my background, honestly, I'm the tech guy inside of KW. Um, but my background before this was advertising and marketing. Um, so social media has been my bag. Online world's been my bag. Uh, be more than happy to guide you any way that makes sense for you. Thank you. Cool. All right. So now that we're inside of campaigns and my screen's finally loaded, we're going to click on the create a new campaign button up here in the top right. And you'll see the screen that says, okay, what type of campaign? And for the most the majority of you, this is the first time we're ever going to click on it. We're going to click on search ad. We're going to click on Google, the middle one right here. Now, this doesn't matter all that much but we use the same setup for whether we're advertising on Facebook or direct mail and Google, but we're going to name our campaign. So today I'm going to, I'm going to do, let's say homes for sale. Let's use Roswell today. And um, what you pick as your goal doesn't really matter all that much. So I just click other and I hit set up campaign. Now, this is where the fun begins. 
let me um, let me kind of scroll through this a little bit to make sure that no one here gets completely stressed out. But take a look at this. It's a two-step process. Step one, we already did. We named our, our campaign. We gave it a goal. So that one's done. We have a check mark. Step number two is that we have to create our ad, which when I click on this, you'll see that this is where we're going to do our workspace over here on the left. And as we work that, our ad is going to be created over here on the right. We're going to have a chance to preview it. And then lastly, we're just going to pick your budget. So we're going to, we're going to adjust that. But it's a three-step process. And is there anyone looking at the screen going, holy cow, what is a headline one, two, URL, display path description, and already feels overwhelmed? No. No? OK. All right, we got one. Let me show you how easy it is to advertise on Google. And here's another reason why I love it. Let's just say that I want to advertise homes for sale in Roswell. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to do some R&D. For those of you in the corporate world or came from a corporate background, what does R&D stand for? Corporate is research and development, but yours is it <laughs> something <laughs> steal and take or something. Rip off, <laughs> Rip off and duplicate. Rip off and duplicate. Off and duplicate. Off and duplicate. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we've had enough of you attend my classes to know that R&D stands for rip off and duplicate. Yes. Now check out how easy this is. I'm literally going to type in the same thing I'm going after. Homes for sale in Roswell, GA. Uh, anytime you do Roswell, there is a, a, a larger city of Roswell, New Mexico. You may run into that. Anytime I do Roswell, do Georgia, it makes it a little bit easier. But I'm going to type that in and hit enter the same way as if I was searching that to go look at houses. Now, for those of you who are completely brand new to Google Ads, Take a look at the first four results. This is an ad. Oh, I did not mean to click on it. Oopsie daisy. This is an ad. This is an ad. This is an ad. This is an ad. We know that because Google has to let the, the consumer know that these are advertisements. They have to give that, that, um, that mark there. Most people, most consumers are oblivious to this. So this is the cool thing is that when I scroll down, whoever mentioned SEO before, Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, and Redfin, these are the four companies who have spent a lot of money and probably have huge technology teams working on the tech keywords that make sure that they come up here naturally in the number one spot. This is truly the number one spot. I can pay Google a small fee. I don't want to say trick, but I can pay a small fee to show up at this top result so the consumer thinks that I'm the best person for that keyword. I'm paying a fee to show up at the top results versus being on page two or three or wherever. Sam, things take, happen, so far, happen so fast in technology. So if we do the ad and you know we, we pop up to the top, I mean, what do we got? An hour before somebody else figures out that they have to redo theirs to be on the top? Or so, so with the advertising world, it's basically who pays the most money. Right. Um, and there's, there's a uh, per dollar spend. So basically what um, the way Google and, and Facebook more or less works the same way is that right now there are four people or four businesses that are all competing for homes for sale in Roswell, Georgia. This just means that right now Method Atlanta outbid these other three. Okay. They had a higher per day spend to show up in that top spot. Yeah. Now, there's some strategies there. Of just like, all right, if I have $50 to spend, instead of spending $1 for 50 days, I may just advertise for one week and just have, you know, seven or $8 per day so that I can outbid those other companies. Um, so, so, I mean, we'll talk about budget whenever we wrap it up, but I would say the key thing is whatever your total budget is for an ad, whether you're advertising on Google or Facebook, you can increase your odds by having a higher daily spend versus your overall spend. It may make sense to advertise yeah. for less days in most cases. Cool. But let's take a look at these. The first four ads, Roswell Homes for Sale, 19 homes just listed. Roswell Homes for Sale, find your new home now. Roswell Homes for Sale, all listings, easy to search. Roswell GA home search, free and robust property search. <laughs> Notice how they tend to repeat themselves more or less. They all say Roswell homes for sale or something close to that. Even if we were to scroll down and look at the 
the companies that didn't spend money to advertise, Roswell Real Estate, Roswell GA Real Estate, Roswell GA Real Estate Homes for Sale, Roswell Homes. This is where the R&D comes in. Essentially, every company is R&Ding each other. We're just going to duplicate the same thing they did. We're going to tweak it a little bit, though. So now, whenever I go back to command, I have headline one and headline two. If I want to completely rip off the first ad, headline one is what you see in the middle here. Roswell Homes for Sale, and that's where it stops. That's headline one. Headline two is where it says 19 homes just listed. On the second one, Roswell Homes for Sale is headline one. Find your new home now is headline two. See how there's a gap on Google Ads? You may never have noticed this before in your life, but that's the difference. Every single one of these has a, has a space in between of headline one and headline two. And what's really funny is this is why I love Google. I don't have to be creative. I can literally make my headline one, Roswell Homes for Sale. I want to stick in. Headline two, that's where you see the creativity of these other brands come in place. So this first one said 19 homes just listed. This one has a tagline for find your new home now. All this, all this thing's easy to search, free and robust property search. You could use a variation of any of these, but I would say try to fit in. Stand out by fitting in. Me personally, I love more so this style. I like it whenever I see a number on my search results. This lets me know that this is accurate information. That's probably wrong. There's probably way more than 19, but I like numbers. Here's how you can come to that information. I'm going to go to my website real quick. I'm going to type in Roswell. And on my map here, there's over a thousand properties for sale, but let me scroll in a little bit to Roswell. I could come in here and say 750 properties for sale near Roswell, Georgia. That could be my headline too. That's normally the style that I like. So now I'm gonna type that in here. Seven hundred and fifty plus homes for sale, and I'm backing that data up because when I look at Roswell and the surrounding area, that's what my results show. Now I'm exactly at seven fifty. I probably want to just say seven hundred plus, just to be fair. Cool. And apparently, you cannot include an exclamation point, so I'm going to just go ahead and just get rid of that. And then now over on the right, you see my headline one, headline two, I have an ad that's starting to come to life. That's done. Final URL, this is where it's important to have a plan. If somebody were to click on my ad, where do I want them to go? Here's the secret that I think a lot of agents fail to, to hit. A lot of times our instincts tell us, just put my website in here put samjackson.kw.com. Tell me, what would be better? If you were to click on my ad as a consumer, would you rather come here or would you rather come here where there's specifically listings for Roswell, Georgia? Second one. Yeah. Fulfill your promise. There is a, there is a I don't wanna say it's a contractual agreement, but there is an agreement between you, the advertiser, and they, the lead, or they, the client, that if they click a button that says homes for sale in Roswell, Georgia, you better send me somewhere close to Roswell, Georgia, not just here's the map of the entire United States. Fulfill your promise. You're gonna have a better lead conversion. If people are looking for data and you give them the best data, you're gonna have a better chance of converting them. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. Let me go back in and zoom in on Roswell. And I apologize if you guys hear leaf blowing in the background. Um, I'm going to, direct people to this page. And the way that you do that is I just come up here and I copy this button. I take this long URL and just hit copy. And then now that's where we're going to direct people to go to on my website or my ad. So now I go back into command and it says your final URL. I'm just going to paste that in here. And I'll be honest with you, I got really, really lucky 
there's like what roughly 20 characters left over there's a 256 max there i got a little bit lucky that that was close now don't worry your clients will not see all of this junk we will cut this off at some point it's not going to be like this is showing up on the ad it's a ridiculous spot there cool display path one display path two this is really really easy we skip it <laughs> nothing to do here uh what this is you'll notice that um here let me get rid of my my website real quick if i were just directing people to like my careers page instead and my website was sam jackson colon slash slash sam jackson you think i can spell my own name sam jackson kw.com if i were to do display path this is where you would see up here like a slash careers because i'll need that's already built in so this is how i direct people to like my careers page internally on my website but since we're sending them to a further interior page we need to put that whole link inside of the final url so if you have like an about me page or if you were specifically directing them to something that exists like up here like leave a review i could use the review review us button instead comes off a little cleaner all right but let me go ahead and get rid of that let me put in my real address and we're good to go all right next is description if i were to go back to my googles this is the part that we're looking at this is the description again nothing drastically different from one to the next updated every 15, uh, 15 minutes 601 681 active listings in roswell properties for sale in roswell uh registered today and access to mls they're just kind of saying things that they're pitching your clients to look at for the most part though no one really reads that they're looking at your titles it's more important you get good titles than it is you spend a lot of time on these but essentially i can copy this don't play your eyes I'm going to rip off and duplicate. I'm going to go to my description. I have 80 characters. And tweak it just enough not to plagiarize. So my description when I go to advertise will say updated every 15 minutes view 700 plus active listings in Roswell, Georgia. Now, trust me on this one. You're not going to see all this, so it looks really cluttered right now, but your ad will say updated every 15 minutes. Actually, let me just go ahead and get rid of some of that junk. So you can see what it would truly look like. This is more so what it would look like. Clean, easy to use for the customers. We're good to go. All right, keywords. All right, this is probably the most stressful part. This is where it requires maybe a little bit of research or just taking the time to think. Now we are allowed to advertise up to 10 keywords. Now keyword can be a key phrase. I don't want you to get stuck on the word word. So homes for sale, oops, I'm in the wrong spot. Homes for sale is a keyword. Comma, and this will allow me to create another keyword. Listings in comma notice how those are five words but now i have separated that into two keywords i can see them highlighted underneath here now house is for sale i challenge you do some research youtube is a great place to go see what other agents are doing type in best google keywords and see what other people are sharing I would also challenge you to create a list that works well for you. So once you've run a few ads, save your keywords. Homes for sale, houses for sale, listings in. Uh, you may just do listings, period. Houses, period. Homes. You may want to type in Roswell. And be careful if you do Roswell GA or Roswell comma GA. Because we're using a comma to separate our keywords, notice how that didn't make it like Roswell comma GA it created like a whole separate one. And now I have a separate GA. So you gotta be kind of careful with those. You may want to pick up the school districts.
Here's another um, super user life hack. Name the communities. So what are the largest subdivisions inside of Roswell? Okay. Now, the maximum that you can do is 10. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the minimum you should do is 10. Max, like max out, don't leave anything off the table here. Questions on this so far? Yeah, Rob, can you go into like one of those other Google ads and, and see their keywords? Oh, I wish. No, unfortunately no, not. I'm just, I'm just like, you know, I know that there's a way, I can't remember years ago you could go in and I don't know. I there there may be. Um, yeah, that's that's a good question. Maybe I'll I'll remember to Google that later. I'll see if you can. <laughs> there, I know that there's a way that you can do it on YouTube. Okay. Um, there's a there's a service called um, Tube Buddy, I think it's called, to where you can find what other keywords and tags they're, they're using. I'm not sure if there's one for Google though. Good question. I I don't know what we can find out. I got to go to YouTube and look at keywords. So let's see, see if that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the reason why I challenge you to go to, to YouTube and to go to Google and do some research on this is because, like I said, the this number one thing that you should have is a plan. Um, when I went through this exercise with a commercial agent, we had a completely different list of all of our keywords. We had to search things like medical office building and um, I don't know, gosh, I'm already blanking on all the things we did, but like depending on your niche or your plan, you're going to have completely different keywords from what we discussed today. I just try to cover the common ones for you. And get small with it. Don't be afraid to put in a subdivision like I did with Martin's Landing or Country Club of Roswell. Um, because people will search homes for sale in Country Club of Roswell, Martin's Landing, Windward. Uh, your larger subdivisions are worth a shot. Can you do more than one ad with the same um, Gmail? The guy yeah, absolutely. To do Homes yeah. for sale in Alpharetta. Homes for, I mean, if I had the budget to do it, homes yep. for sale, you know, the different cities surrounding the office. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep, for sure. Sam? No, no. And that's a that's a great question. I want to hear one second. I'll get you. That, it's a good question because the next thing that we're going to do is locations. So right now, if I'm targeting Roswell, I don't want to target Roswell, Alpharetta, Johns Creek, and all over Atlanta. I may want to spe um, be specific on a strategy for just Roswell here. And then when I target my location, I'm going to target Roswell. However, on my next ad, I'll basically duplicate the same thing, but change out Roswell for Alpharetta. Now, is, is that where it says target Roswell? That's when people actually search and would put in the word Roswell, right? Exactly. And your ad might show up. Okay. Yeah. And, and there's some, there's some geo targeting as well, meaning that if they're, physically searching in the zip codes that we put here. Um, oh, we're right. the okay. results. Yeah. All right, Kimberly, what do you got? Sorry, sorry about uh, that. Um, just a quick question back on the URL. Mm -hmm. You said, you know, you were just copying or borrowing from another Google ad put out by someone else, Homes for Roswell's. Could we go into our KW and do Roswell and then take that link so they stay with KW or does it not matter? Say that for me one more time. I don't think I followed right, that. So you, when you back up to your, you, how you took the, um, the URL, you know, you okay. just took from a random ad, homes for, uh, ro houses for sale Roswell, right? So, so when I, or, okay, so you're saying when I'm on Google. Yeah. Here? Okay. Yeah. Um, and you just... Where did you get the you that long URL? That yeah, so I I went to my website for that. Oh, okay, that. Yeah, so I I went to my website, which is just Sam Jackson, and then I typed in Roswell. So this is a safe place. I know that if anybody gets the that clicks on this, they become my lead. I'm not competing. Got it. Yeah, because you you have your Keller Williams Realty Consultants. Okay, that's yeah. I'm this is my site. Yeah, anyone who comes here, they're they're mine. They're not Heron's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's the challenge. Be careful. Again, Roswell's a tricky one. I typed in Roswell. It took me to New Mexico. Just be careful with that. Um, yep. But yeah, basically, you're going to go interior or deeper into your page and grab that link. Okay. Got it. Yep. Cool. 
Um, here's since since we're here. Here's another cool thing. Um, open houses, another good strategy. I don't know if you haven't played around with our websites. Here's another cool feature. If I wanted to advertise people who are looking at open houses, which is another good source. Let me go back to somewhere that we service. There we go. Um, inside of your map, I can pull a pretty large area, something like this. And if you were to click on the more button inside of your, your website, there's some filters in here to where I can turn on open houses. And then now, instead of there being a couple hundred, there's only 26 properties here that have open houses this weekend. So in theory, I could take something like this, the static map and the static link up here, and I could have a, an entire ad on Google that says, take a look at the upcoming open houses this weekend. Mm. I would just think of what the, what the, um, the search criteria that the consumer might be looking for, but that's another angle that, again, this doesn't just have to be homes for sale in Roswell. You could tweak a different strategy and maybe compete against less people if you have a different angle of open houses in Roswell or open houses near me, and I can get folks that way. So don't be afraid to go deep into your website. You can maybe hit some gold there. All right, ad targeting, back in command, locations. So this is very different from Facebook. So Facebook just normally lets you drop a pin and you're saying, hey, I wanna go after 40, 50 miles around my pin. I can type in as many locations as I need to or want to here in, in, um, in Google. So I type in 30075. If memory serves, I do believe that is the Roswell zip code, correct? Yep, 76. One of them. 7576 and 77, I think. And I am lagging real bad, but let's go through it. <laughs> Hopefully I don't freeze here. There we go. So 30075. And again, it's just like the keywords I can type in as many as I need to. 30076. Yeah, 76 and 77. Cool. And again, you may just want to do what Alex probably did and just Googled yep. zip codes in Roswell. Back you up. You, you were lagging behind, so I'll I, I Google it for you. Thank you. Yeah, but you can put in uh, 77 didn't come up for me, but um, I'm happy with 75 and 76. I could also type in Roswell, Georgia. And that should pull up, I believe. Yep. And I may want to advertise the areas around it. I may want to grab the cities like Alpharetta, Johns Creek. I don't know if you saw that, but Fulton County came up as well. And again, this isn't necessarily keywords. This is where the people might be searching from. So if, Wait, if say that again, where, where they're searching from or what they're searching for? What they're searching from. So if they are in Fulton County, we're going to show up in okay. their Google results. So you're getting people based on location where they live or where they're searching from. Uh -huh. as well as those keywords from up above. So it's a one-two punch. We're, go, we're going after keywords, then we're also going after location. So somebody that was searching, so if I hear you correctly, somebody that was searching for homes in Roswell, open houses in Roswell, but if their location was in Woodstock, then they wouldn't, it wouldn't pull up, right? Correct. Correct. And that's where like, depending on your strategy, having a plan, if, I, if I'm doing an ad based on relocation, I may just wanna put the United States here and that's it. Now the challenge is that you're now advertising across the US <laughs> and you gotta make sure that you have really good keywords. But realistically a lot, well, Atlanta is a unique market, but there are a lot of people who just move from Johns Creek to Roswell, you know, around the, the area. Um, you're gonna have to do some thinking with that one. You could probably put something like relocating to Atlanta or relocating to Alpharetta. Would that work? That, that would be a good keyword. Yeah. For the location, now, right? Not for location, but no. for keyword. Oh, for keyword. You would use, okay. you would use right. relocation as a keyword. Yep. Okay. Sam, could you do the Northeast or like, because a lot of people come down from, say, you know, the Northeast. Could you put Northeast? You, you probably just want to go through and pick your states. Okay. So Maine, New York. Again, there's, I don't believe there's a maximum here. So the ad targeting is uh, like, where do we want to pull from? Like where they actually are. 
Correct. Whether it's United States or or in Roswell looking for things for Roswell. Yes, exactly. So so think of an advantage of our situation here. Imagine that you're aware we have the data that tells us that Los Gatos, California is a vein for us. We have people that move from Los Gatos, California to the Atlanta market. So knowing that information, I could advertise to Los Gatos, California. And then my ad up here could just say moving to Atlanta. Now imagine living in Los Gatos and you're hitting these keywords. You're going to be the only person that's advertising to them. You're going to get them. So Sam, uh, another question then. So it would also behoove you then to research some companies that are making their headquarters in say Atlanta coming up like Google. Um, a couple other big ones are making their hubs in Atlanta and you find out where the, the mother ship, so to speak, is and then advertise or use that as the locations. Exactly. Yeah, so um, yeah. Austin and Atlanta are two huge cities that are getting a ton of tech companies coming in. Most yeah. of them are coming from California. Got it. Yeah. Is there a limit Excellent. on locations? I have yet to run into it. I don't, I don't know if there is. I'm is, not aware of there? one. Great. Okay, cool. Sorry if I'm lagging. It sounds like I am. I apologize for that today. All right. Lastly, all right. I, I have to put on my leadership hat. I have to take off my, my radical marketing hat where I break all the rules. Make sure you do the right thing here. Gender, any gender. Age, click all of them. This is not worth going to realtor jail by not selecting all of these. You do not want to exclude anyone based on fair housing. What if, if you were doing 55 and over communities? You'd still want to advertise to everybody. Okay. Um, or the, uh, let me give you the, the better leadership answer on that one. Mm -hmm. What does fair housing tell you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't want the real estate commission uh, barking yeah. at my door. <laughs> yeah. What does fair housing tell you? Um, there was a date and a time that I used to tell people, hey, it would be okay if you accidentally hit the X on one of those. Um, but uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, and just make sure you also click undetermined. Undetermined just basically means that Google didn't know what their age was. So if somebody signed up for Google and they didn't put in the date of birth, um, that could be a, a significant group of people who may hit your criteria that we don't know. All right, very important thing here, search network. This was checked to both. We want search network. The search network is this. This is showing up at the top here. The display network was kind of like whenever I said donuts for sale, how like the business came up. We're not looking to do that one. We want to be a search network for these ads. And then hit save. Your ads being built on the right, just know it will not look this ugly and this grotesque. That link will be shortened for you. So it will not be, it will not be hideous, it'll be much cleaner. Um, and then the last thing is you have to do your budget and your duration. So this is defaulted. I think it spends $30 down here and it does it for 10 days. So 30 divided by 10 gives me $3 a day. If I had $30, I personally would probably say, don't do it for 10 days, do it for like six or five and increase your daily per channel. I just doubled my daily spend. That will give me a better chance of being at the number one or two spot versus the three or the four. Because let's be real, who in their, in their mind is clicking the fourth ad? No one. You wanna be up here, number one or number two. You know, Sam, sometimes when I read those ads and I look at the big, the big ad, you know, the first, the first line, but I do sometimes look at the second line just to kind of see what it's trying to tell me this is. So I don't waste time. You know, but you're aware. Underneath. You're aware like of update. how this works, though. <laughs> Most people huh? aren't. <laughs> you're, you're aware that there's advertising on Google. A lot of people aren't, though. A lot of people just Perfect. click. They, they have no idea that there's even an ad here. Right. Let's do it again. 
Um, I'm glad I accidentally clicked because I, I want to bring up a point. If you see your ad on Google, don't click it. If you see your ad on Facebook, you just don't charge click it. yourself. You just charge yourself. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, how um, do you see what it looks like? If it like what what it's like, you're making sure that all the connections are right and it's not going somewhere. If you well, want that peace of mind, have go a friend for it. do it. Never mind, I got it. <laughs> well, don't have a friend do it. It still costs you money. Um, <laughs> um, but have the peace of mind. Just, I guess, the key thing for that, Heron, would be mm. maybe just copy and paste your your website into another tab, just to make sure that that's where you want people to go to. Um, but uh, yeah, don't don't spend don't spend your money on an ad or clicking through your ad. All right. And then last things last, I just hit publish campaign and that goes out the door. This will run immediately. Um, there really isn't like an approval process with Google like there is on Facebook. Um, they have a lot less rules and honestly, they weed out the majority of them based on what they have here. So once I hit create campaign that goes right out the door, I get charged and that will charge me 30 bucks from Google. Let me hit refresh and that should come in. So that's active right now. So if I were to go hit those keywords on Google, I'd probably start getting charged for, for leads here. You see them all the are the dates, the number of days do they have to be, what's the word I'm trying to think, consecutive? They do. Yeah. So it would be if you're doing six days, it would be six consecutive days. Yeah. So if you're looking to do, if you're trying to hit a weekend, maybe just delay it when you start. Don't start today, start it on Thursday. Thanks. Let me go ahead and stop my campaign and so I don't your, have to charge more money. And Sam, does your uh, ad stay active until the, uh, the the clicks exhaust your daily limit? So, so it it's really complicated. I don't know one hundred percent how it works, but my understanding is that I gave myself a daily budget of. I think what, five or $6. Um, and what's cool is that we, if I were to say to Google, and if I were to do this 100% on Google without this command workaround, I would say, hey, Google, I have 30 bucks, go spend it. They would spend every dollar. My understanding of this layer and partnership with command is that I don't tell Google I have six bucks. I tell Kelly I have six bucks. And then Kelly determines did we hit enough keywords? Did we hit the right location? Are we going after the right people? And I'm going to bid as much as I can to make sure that I'm targeting a little bit stronger than just trying to have like a shotgun approach to it. Um, so there's an extra level of like, I don't want to say like security, but like accountability to your dollar that KW's technology is working as a middleman saying like, Google, don't take all of our money. We want to go after this person because we're looking to, to increase listings or buyers. Spend two cents to advertise on the spot right now versus four cents. It's going to work on like a, a fluctuating bidding system throughout the day and throughout that week. And I'm sure I probably just made that more confusing. Did that make sense at all to anyone? Absolutely. Okay. It, it does. Yeah, exactly. not, well, I guess, I guess well, the question is, you know, is there the possibility of exhausting your ad in a single day if, you know, you just get a ton of hits? So you're saying spending all thirty dollars in one day versus six? In my situation, you here? get charged per you get charged per click, right? Every time Correct. somebody clicks on your ad, you get charged. Yeah, yeah. So it, it would be on a per day basis. So um, because we set it for how many days in total budget, even though I'm spending thirty dollars, I would cap out that six dollars today. Most likely, and, and that's I don't know that it's ever happened. Most cases, you have this carryover from one day to the next. That I may spend four dollars on day one, and then I'll have an extra two bucks for the the rest of the uh, the ad. Are you saying I, I that's it's a, it's, well, oh God. So, sorry? Are you saying that's a dollar a click? No, no, no. It's it's like, and oftentimes it's like a fraction of a penny to okay. show up online. Um, here, let me go back to my campaigns. You'll see the stats here. that once your ad starts running, it'll give you, it'll give you some stats here. So the, it, it costs you like pennies 
to get these impressions. And that means that you're showing up on someone's Google search. You're in that one, two, three, or four ads. You're, you're showing, up, showing up on someone's feed. And then you're going to see an increase. It's going to be like, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six dollars per click. That means someone saw you, they clicked on you, and they moved on. And then you'll see if someone became a lead or not. Now, I don't want to scare y'all, but with Google ads, you typically see zero leads when you run them. And the reason for that is that Google doesn't convert the lead, your website does. So you'll see that you have new leads coming into your website, but they're not going to hit this the screen here most likely. Because Google doesn't do the capturing, we can't quantify that, your ad does. So you're going to you're going to see that and you'll see some sources come through. Would they automatically be in our contacts? Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. So so let's let's just play through that. I searched homes for sale in Roswell. I clicked through to this screen right here. This is where I was directed to. I'm not currently logged in. So this is kind of a real life situation. Let's just say that I'm starting to look at properties. Oh, this one's cute. I'm gonna go take a look at the open house this weekend. I open it up. Cool, cool, cool. I like it. Uh, I'm gonna favorite it. I have to register. I become a, I become a lead. I show up okay. inside of your command underneath contacts. Okay, I understand. If I click ask your agent, schedule a tour, same thing. Those screens come up. So it's kind of what I was saying earlier. We're like, we have forced registration uh, in the moments where it makes sense. Certain buttons on the screen will, will create a contact for you. Now, is but that the challenging... The if, oh, go ahead. If, if someone goes directly once to someone, what Once someone clicks on, um, signs up, um, and, and they're in our command. Do we get notification immediately on this? Yes. So that we can reach out to them? Okay, yes. Yeah. So if I were to do this right now, and let me click, um, let me click save real quick. It's going to force me to register. Um, I need a new name. Um, we're going to pull in Paul Rudd. Oh, a real email. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I sign up as Paul Rod. Let's just say he came through through Gmail or through Google. Signs up. That person's a lead. He's now signed in. So he has an account up here now. If I were to jump to my command, let me hit refresh. I should have a bell notification up here that says I have a new lead that says Paul Rudd. So you get alerted in command. Now, mobily, because I know that you guys aren't hanging out your computers all day, every day, <laughs> test to it. Um, you want to have the Kelly app downloaded. That's the blue app that's for agents only. It's Keller without the R, K-E-L-L-E. -E. You basically want to have that on your phone and you want to make sure that you go into your phone settings and make sure like notifications are all the way up. Cause you like, I, I, I can't really show you, but um, I had a push notification that came through that says you have a new site registration for Paul Rudd. I got it instantly. But the Kelly app yeah, is the yeah. best way to get those instant mm -hmm. notifications that a new lead. And what's cool is that not only do I get like new leads, I also get notified if like Paul were to come back later and sign in again, I get a sign-in notification. It says, hey, Paul's on your website right now. One more question following up on that. Have you heard from other you know, great agents? When's the best time to call them back immediately while they're still looking or give them five <laughs> minutes? <laughs> yes, thank you for that. That's a fantastic question. Thank There's you. Varying, varying opinions on this, right? So we, we've, all, we've often heard the, the phrase speed delete. And in this case, I 100% agree with speed delete. It's important to know the source of the lead. Like we talked about at the beginning of class, the different buckets. With a, with a search site, like your website or a Google lead, I want to call them quickly within the first five minutes. A Facebook lead, I could take days to respond. It wouldn't make any difference on that conversion rate. Where the lead come from makes a huge difference in how quickly you should call them. Hey, Sam, you want to do a quick uh, role play? Yes, Alex. You got time you. for it? I, I do if y'all do. Yeah. Okay. So who's role playing? What, what are we doing? 
Uh, you just want to, I mean, for, for ease of operation here. Um, All right. So you're a Google, you're a Google lead. And what do I do now? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to be the, you want to be the lead? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Okay. Hey, Alex, this is Sam Jackson with Keller Williams. Uh, hey, I just want to reach out to you. Um, looks like you just registered on my website. I just want to touch base and see if there's anything I can help you with. Yeah, I was just on the website looking at houses in, uh, in Roswell. Um, not, not too bad looking. Got any, uh, got any tips for the website overall? Yeah, I mean, the key thing is this thing's supposed to be super easy for you. So, um, yeah, let me ask a quick question. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Like, what has you looking on the home search websites? Well, um, we, we got to move pretty soon. Uh, wife got a promotion. And I got to find a place we can have the, uh, the dog in the backyard for the kids. So Excellent. Let me break. That's, let me break script for a second. Well. Let me break script for a second. One, Alex always takes it too easy on me. <laughs> um, a, a lot of times, folks won't. They won't necessarily remember that they did anything, right? I may have favorited a property. I signed up. They're not necessarily expecting a phone call from a salesperson at that moment. Um, so you may get some pushback immediately. Okay. Um, let's, so Alex, let's do it again. Okay. So, so really you. quickly, um, hey, this is Sam Jackson, Keller Williams. Um, you just happened to kind of click through my website. What can I help you with today? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, I just I just clicked on an ad on Facebook here. What what what's this call about? It I didn't tell you to call me. Hey, it's all good. Hey, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to to upset you there. Um, yeah, you had uh, just kind of signed up on my website. In fact, I think it may have favored a property, and it's my website, so I get notified for it. But I just want to check in and see, you know, maybe has you looking at homes today. Oh, okay. All right. So that was your website. All right. Yeah, I was just checking out the homes over there. Uh, not quite ready to buy yet, maybe in another couple months or so. Great. Excellent. Yeah. And the key thing, it is just my website. And I know that we don't have any rapport, but um, just know I'm not that that like crazy stressful of an agent. Um, but one of the key things about my, my website versus Zillow is that like, it's just me. So if there's ever a time that you're just looking around the website and you just want to want some more information, I'm not going to call you and push you. Just go ahead and hit that ask your agent button. Send me a note. Be more than happy to reach out to you. Zillow, you're going to get called by like 14 agents, a mortgage company or two. Uh, feel free to save my website, bookmark it. You have a profile created. Um, and I can touch back with you like in a month from now to see if anything changed. But um, while I have you, what are you looking for? Is there anything I can set you up on a search just to make it easy for you? Um, yeah, that, at the backyard in Roswell, it's kind of hard to find. So if you could help me with that. I, I'd appreciate that. Perfect. And then from here, we just go into the qualifying questions. How much land, how many houses, how many bedrooms? That's the normal conversation y'all are used to. But the key thing is you want to address, and Alex, you did really good to that time. <laughs> You're going to get some pushback. People don't necessarily know that they clicked on something. They don't want to get called by a salesperson immediately. You do want to call them because I want to have that opportunity. While he is still in front of my, his screen, I want to have that conversation with him or her, whoever you get. Um, but I want to have that speed to lead so I can still connect with them and I can anchor my, my website, my services and me. And I have that opportunity to get him off of Zillow and pitch a reason why he needs to stay on my website. And then if I can have that pre-qualifying question, Hey, great. I, I'm not going to push you. I set up a search for you. We can turn on to where you get notifications daily or once a week. If there's anything you like, hit that heart button, let me know. And we can go tour, but I'm training him to now use my website so that he never goes to Zillow. And that's the beauty of these Google leads that they're coming in so early in the research process, they're unrepresented and it's, you're getting them well beyond or well before they ever got to Zillow to begin with. And, and let me expand on that real quick, Sam, for just Please. a second here. Uh, Coda Gibson has an amazing, absolute amazing script with this. And based on what he says, you know, I, I absolutely understand. Um, you know, I, I understand that you're looking and you're, casually checking out the market well, let's do this this is a great website with a lot of helpful information for you also a lot of market local information so let me match my behavior with your motivation let, let's Love that. sign into the website and you can continue to look at your leisure i will not contact you until you're, you're ready to use that button and contact me and let me know when you're Love that. Like and Cody it. Gibson is a god among scripts. Like the guy is just, that's all, that's what he's known for. 
Um, and for you ladies who don't know Cody Gibson, he is very easy on the eyes too. Very attractive man. I can see that. He's the best yeah. looking agent we have in we're, KW. We're men. So. We're, we can yeah. admit that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go give him a follow on KW Connector or social media. But yeah, his scripts are, are great. Thanks for sharing that one, Alex. I haven't heard that one from him. Cool. Yeah. I do have that uh, written down. So I'll, I'll send it over to you. So you've got a copy in case you want to share it. Huh? Throw that throw that in Georgia Lacey group. I'm sure there's a lot of folks that could, that could okay. take that one. Yeah. Appreciate that. Cool. All right, let's wrap up class. Who's excited for Google Ads? Who's going to run one today or in the next two days? I am tonight. Excellent. Me too. Have a, have a plan, get your website set up. And just, again, it's just like whenever I go to the casino, this may be 20 bucks I'm going to lose the first time, but I'm going to get better at card playing the next time I go. So um, if you get nothing out of it, at least get the experience, start with a small budget. And then you never know that 20 bucks may turn into $10,000. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sam. Y'all are great. Thank y'all. Thank you. See you. See when, you. See you. when would this be uploaded to YouTube? I probably later tonight. I'll get it. I'll get it okay, downloaded on my computer. I'll get it uploaded to YouTube. Okay. Yeah. If anyone needs the the recording, um, who haven't been my classes in the last couple of weeks, I'm downloading every class, uploading it to my YouTube channel in command with Sam.com. And there's a playlist called in class recordings, which all the stuff is stored on. Um, so if you miss a class or want to go back and watch it and pause it and do the ad um, as a, as a walkthrough, feel free to do that. All right. Great. Excellent. Thank y'all. I'll see you. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. See y'all.